you might get a few more thoughts on that when I do my worst books of the year. First, the beginning of the month, I'm picking them all up. <laughs> kind of see what the original story was and compare it to um, the Muppets. <laughs> that is not right. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> Welcome back to another video. My name's Ro and today we are going to go through my December wrap up as well as all of my end of year stats for 2021. So in the month of December I read nine books. I think that's pretty good. I managed to get through quite a lot after my exams and I'm quite pleased with the amount I ended up reading in the end because I read three immediately after my first lot of exams. Then I had to do another exam on the 23rd and I only read one book in between there. And then after my exam, so basically over Christmas and coming into the new year, I read five more books. We may as well start there. First, the beginning of the month, I'm picking them all up. I read the Nevermore series. Um, these are the first three books. These are the only ones that are out. First one, Nevermore, was a reread. And then I read Wonder Smith and Hollow Pox, which are book two and three. I fell in love even more with this all over again. I do have a vlog linked above if you would like to check out my full thoughts because I did a self-care vlog after my big exams um, and basically was like, I need to feel good. So I decided to read further in the series, even though I kind of didn't want to because the fourth book isn't out until next October now, or I should say this October since it's 2022 now, but October 2022 is when book four is out. So do you have to wait quite a little while for it? But I was in that mood and I knew I'd need some kind of self-care, some kind of middle grade, some kind of wholesome thing to make me feel better. And that's exactly what it gave me. It gave what needed to be gave. I felt good. I felt brilliant after it. If you don't know what Nevermore is about, it is my favourite middle grade series, <laughs> at least modern, that I've read as an adult anyway. Um, it is about Morgan Crow. She is cursed to die when she turns 11 years old, but... Jupiter North shows up on her 11th birthday, whisks her away to Nevermore. But there's a cat, she has to kind of like earn her citizenship there. Um, and so she has to get into the Wondrous Society by doing trials, hence the uh, subtitle of the Trials of Morgan Crow. Now, I've said this a lot in the vlog and I say it a lot all the time, but this is basically the new Harry Potter to me. Um, and I hate comping it to that, but I'm trying to push it on people, people who have Harry Potter as their kind of anxious or comfort read, which obviously there is nothing wrong with that, but for people who are trying to move away from it because they don't want to support JK Rowling, or if they're kind of tainted by it, then please, please try out Nevermore. I'd highly recommend it. Next up, I read my Patreon pick for November and December, the bi-monthly book club, and that was I Am Widow by Jean J. Zhao. And this is the Illumicrate version. Um, annoyed that the hardback is small, but God, not much you can do about that. This is incredible. Everyone I've seen read it has not rated it below a four, except I think maybe one of my patrons, it might have been Sarah. Um, <laughs> but literally 90% of my patrons all voted it four or five stars. I gave it like a 4.75. There is a video coming later on this week. You will see me talking about all of my books that were really, really close to a five star, um, but didn't quite hit the mark. And I'm not going to go into that here. But Iron Widow is a science fiction YA book about a girl called Wu Zetian. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce them. I have watched the TikTok that the author has made, but I've completely forgotten all the pronunciations. So I do apologize for butchering these Chinese names. So this has Polly amorous rep in it. It has bisexual rep. The main character is like the most badass, does not give a fuck about anyone except herself. And, but in a good way in, in that you root for her and she's had all this shit done to her and she just is beyond caring at this point for society, for anyone else. And she is just fucking crazy. And I am in love with her. This is the exact type of female character I feel like people have been asking for um, when they like talk about they want morally gray women, when they talk about they want strong women or women who are evil and can make mistakes without having to be redeemed and things like that. 
they should deserve that chance to have character arcs like that as well and that exactly what this main character is like. There's a kind of like rivals slash enemies to lovers thing going on here as well as friends to lovers. Two separate things obviously, <laughs> not, not the same uh, ships. It's set in a science fiction world where these things called chrysalis exist and they're huge things made of metal. Kind of reminds me of Power Rangers when they come together or Gundams in anime if you ever watched an anime with Gundams in. Or possibly as well um, like Digimon on, like how they go from like a tiny thing to a medium size to like usually an upright bipedal which means stood on like two feet kind of thing evolution don't know if any of that's making sense there is artwork on the author's twitter tiktok everything they put up artwork for people to help like visualize it and the author does go by they them pronouns just to let you all know yeah this was just fucking incredible it was a wild ride from start to finish and i'm super excited for the sequel next up i read a christmas carol by charles dickens me and jord listened to this on the way up to the cottage again another vlog christmas cottage vlog up in the corner if you'd like to check it out yeah so we listened to this on audio because it was on audible plus which if you like buy monthly on audible like if you pay monthly or i have a yearly subscription because i can't be asked to pay I, i'd rather pay cheaper um for more audiobooks so i pay about five pound an audiobook when it's um yearly uh irrelevant anyway but we listened to it on the way up it was only about two and a bit hours and it was read by hugh grant and it was pretty good i really liked it but i couldn't stop picturing just muppets <laughs> because every year jordan and i watch muppets christmas carol i've never watched any other adaptation of christmas carol so all i have in my head is kermit as bob cratchit and i can't remember the really famous actor's name and jaw's gonna kill me as scrooge so yeah it was pretty good not really much to say to be honest i think i ended up giving it four stars it's kind of hard to rate classics i feel especially when i know the story so well from watching the film over and over um i thought it was interesting i thought it was a cool way to kind of see what the original story was and compare it to um the muppets <laughs> Next up is the reason why I wait till January until I've completed the whole entire year before I do any best and worst of the year videos. And that is Midnight in Everwood by Emmy Kuznyar. This is the Waterstones edition, which is very pretty and I will be leaving it in my blue shelf because it's pretty. This was not good. <laughs> This is a nutcracker retelling that's just kind of historically historical fiction type thing set in 1906 in Nottingham and the main character Marietta really wants to be a ballerina. She just loves dancing but her family are just like no you need to get married like this is a flight of fancy like you can't just do this the rest of your life kind of thing. Typical for the time towards women wanting to do what they want to do. So this guy shows up Dr Drosselmeyer and that is the unoriginal name from the Nutcracker uh, story that is the guy who created the whole nutcracker stuff and made it to life that's the only name that has transferred over if i remember correctly and basically he builds her like this stage thing because she wants to do her final dance on christmas eve or something and when she goes to do it on stage she gets transported to a magical world instead and everything is like made of sugar and stuff i just don't think it was a very good retelling to be honest i don't think it was a very good book in general the writing was very flowery and i and i like that type of writing but some of the words did get repeated quite a lot jord noticed the word gossamer loads i noticed the word buttery a lot someone got cleaved in two twice in like two pages it just it was just really really weak even the world building was weak i thought the first maybe 80 pages was actually very strong i was really intrigued and really interested but as soon as she got to the portal fantasy world which to me should have been the best part obviously that's my jam it was just not good it was really weakly developed i thought that the elements of the nutcracker that she brought in weren't developed enough she would just sprinkle them in as easter eggs and stuff like that doesn't make sense to do like something to do with the war that's a pretty fucking big thing you can't just kind of gloss over that so weak characters don't remember any of their names weak side characters weak plot i don't think she adapted the plot of the nutcracker very well didn't make it into something that is worth 300 pages to be honest so yeah this was awful i gave it two stars i did not enjoy it at all so you might get a few more thoughts on that when I do my worst books of the year. <laughs> Next up, I finished an audiobook that I had carried on from November and that was Ship of Magic. This took me about a month to read. It was very slow. I did end up giving it four stars, but that is simply for Robin Hobb's ability to make me hate characters and want them to die 
a horrible death. You know, it made me viscerally feel feelings against lots of the characters, or for lots of the characters. Characters writing and intrigue were super high for this one, and that's what pushed it up to a four, um, but I think it was just too long, and I think that there were a lot of threads being built up and put down ready for book two. So I'm hoping book two will be a five star because it is everyone's favourite in the series that I've seen rate them. So I'm excited to get to the sequel but I don't know when. I do kind of want to still try and get through one hob a month as we go but I'm one month behind currently which isn't too bad actually. Being only one month behind is not actually that bad but considering they're quite long it's bad in that sense. So like I should have read technically Sh Mad Ship in December and then Ship of Destiny to in this month in January. I don't think I'm gonna get to any hob this month to be honest because I have a lot of other long fantasy I want to get to so I may end up picking it back up again in February. Next up I read Take a Hint Danny Brown. This was gifted to me by Meg if I remember correctly. Yeah Meg, one of my patrons, one of my deities. Thank you Meg. I think this was for my birthday if I remember correctly. It was not Christmas, it was birthday. This was really good. It's actually another one that's going to be going on my 4.75 list. So again, I'm not going to go into it too much today, but it was super, super close to a five star. And that actually is quite a feat for me because romance isn't really my bag. So I don't tend to ever give anything a five star on romance because it's not something I'd reread because that's kind of a big thing when I give something five stars. It's that I would reread it. With, like the feeling of I would love to read this again. This was super, super close. I really, really enjoyed the anxiety rep for Zafia and I really enjoyed the rep of just like the way down Danny is, there isn't really like a specific word for it, but I really, really related to the fact that like she, her brain just goes a million miles a fucking hour constantly. She's constantly thinking about everything that's going on. She has to write stuff down and like stick it on a wall to think about it. And like, she'll stop in the middle of like talking to someone just to think through something and like kind of not realize. And I do that all of the time <laughs> because my brain is going so fucking fast that I can't keep up with my own thoughts and I need to write things down and I need to just get everything organized. So I felt very relatable to both characters, to be honest. And I just really liked the way they got together and like the, the, the slow burn and the build up to them actually getting together. The only thing I didn't like, and I know this happens in every single romance where there's like a conflict near the end and then it does get resolved because of the happily ever after kind of requirement for romance. But in both of the Brown Sisters now, I felt like both of the conflicts have been entirely avoidable with communication. And I know everyone, not everyone's perfect and everyone's messy so that people don't communicate, but it, it felt like very normal misunderstandings and like people would storm off and stuff. And it's like, I don't understand why you would do that. Why wouldn't you just stay and like talk it out? So uh, to me, that's not, I don't like reading people who do that. So I think that is slightly what, like, I think this one had a bit more of an understandable one. The Chloe Brown one was ridiculous, I thought. But this one had a bit more of an understandable one, but it still was a little bit like, why did you say that? Like, kind of thing. Very close, but no cigar. And the final book that I read in December and the final book of 2021 was The House of Chicken Legs by Sophie Anderson. This I read, actually, it was not on my TBR, but I wanted to read it for Buzzwordathon because there was House or Home in the title. Um, and I still hadn't got around to that one. I think I did have one left over and it was having lost in the title, but I might just backdate that if I uh, ever do it. Um, this is a middle grade and it was pretty good. Sophie Anderson is a pretty popular middle grade author. She always does like Slavic folklore and I really, really, really like Slavic folklore and like wintry folklore and, and, and mythology and things. Hence why I really love The Bear and the Nightingale and stuff like this is obviously about Baba Yaga and her walking house. The child did really, really annoy me in this and I don't even remember her name's Marinka, but it was almost like I understood why she acted like that because she's a child, like obviously. So it was just like, I was annoyed because I don't like reading about annoying children and like children's behavior being like that. But as an adult, I can recognize like why she acted and reacted the way she did to things. So it was like a balance of like, I don't like, annoying children or children who are like uh, kicking off and, and acting out kind of thing because it is annoying like let's be honest but I understood why so there was like a bit of both there and in the end I didn't I did really enjoy it I did feel, feel it was a tiny bit repetitive in the middle I think something different should have happened because she kept trying to do the same thing over and over she did about three times and got stopped three times so 
I think maybe one slightly different thing in the middle could have been better to try and solve her issue, but that's what I ended up giving it four stars instead of five, so still a really, really solid read. It was super short and I really liked the world and I really liked the wheel building. I thought it was really good. I liked it a lot. So that was it for my December wrap up and now I'm just gonna run through some quick stats with you just cause you know, everybody loves stats. <laughs> so my best reading month for the year in terms of books was actually October. And this was for Spoopathon because I definitely read way more because I read all of these Cirque de Freak books and there are 12 of those and those are novellas. So that was the biggest amount of books. In terms of the amount of pages, I actually read seven 70 more pages in July than I did in October. So in July I read 4,778 pages and then in October it was 4,707. <laughs> so it was very close between um, October being highest books and highest pages but July was the highest for pages. And I'll have a look and see what I read in July and see if they're long books. So no long books in July. I just read a lot of smut. <laughs> So no long books in July, just a lot of Kindle Unlimited Smut. Keep an eye out for that video coming soon because I put it all into one video for the Kindle Unlimited Smut review in, in year in review. So yeah, um, I will be doing that soon. In total, I read 101 books this year, which is incredible because I've only ever, like I think the most I've ever read is 56. So that's almost double what I've ever read in my life. So I am baffled, amazed, glorified at myself in awe and it was a total of 37,160 pages. I did DNF two books and that was Threadneedle by Carrie Thomas and Deal with the Elf King by I don't know. They were both bad. I will be talking about those in my worst books of the year. In terms of reading method, so the format of reading, I read 54 physical books, 25 audiobooks and 22 ebooks. A total of 49% of all the books that I read in 2021 were fantasy books and the next one down there was actually romance. So that was 20% um, of the books. So I think that was a lot of the Kindle Unlimited coming in as well as starting Chloe Brown, Danny Brown. Um, and then the next one down there is in fact Paranormal and there are 12 of those which means that is all of the Cirque de Freak books. In terms of average length of book read, according to my stats, I have an equal amount of the most. So I have 20 books that were between 150 and 200 pages. So that's mainly probably Cirque de Freak and Wayward Children, things like that. And then I also read 20% of books that were between 350 and 400 pages. So I think the 350 to 400 is my general area usually. And then the 150 to 200 obviously came up a lot this year because of the types of books I was reading. and obviously really helped me get to that 100 as well. So I'm gonna try and continue that this year, but I don't know of that many more novellas. So maybe give me some recs in the comments. I did read one of the Murderbot novellas, so I might continue with that this year as well. In terms of star ratings, I gave out 33 five stars. 11 of those were rereads though, so technically 22 five stars for me. I gave out 44 four stars, 18 three stars, four two stars and two one stars. One of those might be a DNF there because I'm trying to figure out with Corpile if I want to put DNFs into my tracker because I don't DNF that often so I might just leave them out and make a separate list. Not relevant right now. But overall my rating was about four stars um, in our, on average in the year, which is pretty fucking good I think. But I think I do kind of want to be a little bit more critical and a bit more thinking about my ratings coming this year in terms of Core Pile as well. Um, and maybe get into doing half star ratings because the version three of Core Pile has just come out. So I may try and be a bit harsher or be a bit more diligent with like keeping up with like what I think is a 3.5 versus a four because I like to separate those things out. In terms of age category, I read 62 adult books, 20 young adult books, uh, 15 middle grades, and then a couple of children's and new adult, which I think I may have screwed up with the children's there. Children's and middle grade to me is the same. I read 22 books that were published in 2020 and 21 books that were published in 2021. So a lot of new releases I was reading in 2021 from that year and the year before. I need to get some backlist books this year. So maybe pushing the percentage more to before 2019 possibly. <laughs> 
In terms of LGBTQ plus rep, I read 65 books that had it was absent. I read 18 books where it was present and I read 21 books where it was main character. I really wanna push up my LGBTQ and in fact POC author. If we move down to authors of color, I only read 19 books that were by an author of color and I read 82 books that weren't. So I think I want to try and get at least maybe like 25% of my books, like push it up because it's currently at 18% or 18 and a half percent. Maybe push that up to 25% this year. I know that a lot of my most anticipated reads this year, I think maybe like a good 80% of them are by authors of colour. So I'm clearly excited for these books, but I'm not picking them up. So I think I want to focus a bit more on that and focus in a bit more on LGBTQ plus rep as well. Especially in fantasy though, I feel like it's not as prevalent as in maybe LGBTQ plus contemporary. So I think I do actually maybe want to branch out a little bit into contemporary LGBTQ plus fiction. I am looking into maybe Jennifer Duggan who's done Hot Dog Girl, Verona Comics and something else because people are raving about them. This is a year for branching out, not just in my genres, but I want to increase my authors of colour and my LGBTQ club. LGBTQ plus rep. Because looking at these stats, this is kind of the first time I've ever tracked these kinds of stats. I don't know, I just wanna support communities more, especially I'm in the LGBTQ plus community myself. I wanna be shouting about these books, I really do. So yeah, definitely wanna get that up. In terms of series or standalone, I read 28 standalones this year and 73 series, which is crazy. <laughs> I think I need to keep up and make a series tracker. There is one in my journal, but I think I want to track the ones that I finished overall as well. So I want to have a total one, not just the ones I'm in the middle of. Because this does say that I finished five series this year, but I think some of those are rereads. Three, I finished three series this year. That is ridiculous. I, I finished Bear and the Nightingale series or the Winter Night trilogy. I finished The Burning Gods or the Poppy War trilogy. And I finished the first Farseer trilogy, and that's it. That is ridiculous. That is actually fucking shocking. Oh, and I've started so many. <laughs> ah! I'm literally gonna scream. Three series? I finished three? That's awful. That's so bad. Oh my god. <laughs> So out of the 73 books that I read in a series, only three of those were finishers of series. I read 70 books. I mean, some of those series aren't finished yet. So like Black Sun, Legendborn, Wave the, Wave the Argosy is finished, Never mind. Uh, Wayward Children, like stuff like that is an ongoing series. This is why I wanna keep track of things. Another goal that it was not in my goals video. The last stat for you is I reread 18 books and I read 83 books. That is not right. Oh yeah, it is. <sighs> so 82% of my books were for the first time reading and 17% were rereads. So that's not too bad. I kind of want to keep this to a minimum though. I need to reread certain ones for um, like books coming out next that I genuinely have no fucking clue what happened in the first book. And I have a couple of projects ongoing that I need to do rereads for, but I'm not saying anything about that right now, but please be excited for it, because I am. That's it for my stats and my December wrap up, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Sorry that I got a bit, um, I'm not gonna apologize. I'm going feral. I can't believe I only read three series this year. <laughs> ah, I wanna cry. Once I make a series tracker, I think I'll feel better because half of them, I swear, are probably already in the middle of. Like, they don't, they're not finished, so, it's fine. Please do give this video a like if you enjoyed. I read quite different colourful books this month, so if you were here but you didn't really have anything to say but wanted to let me know that you were here, leave me a little rainbow flag emoji in the comments. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe so you get all of that future content from me in your inbox. All of my links are in the description below, including my Patreon. If you don't know what goes on on my Patreon, then this is what you're missing out on. I'm gonna spray some deodorant because I stink. <laughs> The timing of you saying you stink and George coughing. <laughs> Speaking of my Patreon, I want to give a huge, huge shout out to everyone at my deity tier. So that is Becca, Meg, Rachel, Lisa, Lydia, Mercy, Sarah, Tori, Liv, Adinda, Celeste, Britt, Malus, Kay, Danny, Hannah, William, Chris, Andy, Lauren, Kate, Kendra, Ashley, KW, Lynn, Frog, and Amy. Thank you guys so much for all of your support, and I'll see you in another video. 
Bye.